Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Nick Slavic, proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. Uh, I'm also the host of Ask a Painter Live, and I'm also a member of the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. And this feed is through the Painting and, Con uh, Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. This is a uh, monthly event that the PDCA puts on. It's live in the field training from a contractor for other contractors. My Ask a Painter thing that I do weekly as well is for mainly homeowners owners, contractors like to chime in as well too. Um, so today uh, what we're actually going to do uh, for the next half hour 45 minutes is I am going to actually conduct an estimate and a color consultation. You guys can watch in, uh, see how it's done, and then uh, during and after you guys can send me your questions and I can take care of those after. Uh, a few things before we get going here. Um, all of these videos, uh, the live in the field training, will be archived at the uh, Contractor College on the PDCA website. Uh, it's a great organization. I was introduced to it, you know, in the last two years here, and it's really made me rethink a lot of what I do with my business, uh, my, my philosophy on business, things like that. Uh, so all of these, all of these live in the in the field trainings will be found there. Contractor College is also a great asset too, if you want to go there and be a better human and be a better painter. So. Uh, like I said, we're going to be doing a live estimate and a live color consultation at this residence right here. The homeowners agreed to uh, be part of this. Uh, part of my philosophy about all this is never selling. I have never directly sold anything to anyone. Uh, all my advertisements, even when I do direct mailing, uh, they're just thank you cards. I never solicit actively any business and when I do my estimates and color consultations I take the same um, I take the same approach to that as well so I simply lay out all the information and you have to understand that by the time I'm standing on somebody's steps they called me so already they have a little bit of skin in the game and they showed some incentive that they want some work done uh, and again it's all about trust these people will most likely end up going to work, their kids will go off to daycare or school, and I will be left with their house and all their belongings. So from the second I ring the doorbell to when I walk out to my truck, all I'm trying to do is gain the homeowner's trust. Uh, and with that comes authenticity and being genuine. You have to show that you know what you do, that you're an expert, and there should be no question in your mind, uh, in the homeowner's mind, that you can do exactly what you're gonna say that you're gonna do. Uh, and to me, I will broach the subject of um, free estimates uh, and, and pre-qualifying and things like that after I do the estimate. I think it's a subject that contractors talk quite a bit about. So uh, you can send in questions about that and I'll give you my thoughts after we do the estimate. Uh, to me, estimates are marketing. Uh, imagine that you know you could have uh, you could have a big budget for Google AdWords. You could do print advertising. You could do direct mailing. But to me, what better marketing could you have than actually being in somebody's house when they already have a little bit of skin in the game and incentive to possibly hire you? So they already showed interest. So all you have to do is basically not screw it up. You can't give them any reason to doubt exactly what you're saying. So. With that, um, I will go through a couple of my non-negotiables and then we'll ring this doorbell and see what we can get done here. Uh, my non-negotiables, I have to be in paint clothes. Um, I wear my working clothes like you see here. Uh, I'm not the polo shirt and khaki kind of guy, no offense to those who are, but I think uh, you know showing that I actually do my trade builds a little bit of uh, trust. Um, I, I take my paint truck, you can see out here, Nice, clean-looking, respectable paint vehicle. Uh, just to show again that, you know, uh, logo on my chest. Uh, I'm the same person who answered their phone. I got the logo here. It's on my truck, and I'm the same person that will show up at their door. So that builds trust as well. Uh, my forms are already filled out. I have the estimate form with their name, address, phone number, uh, date, everything else already ready to go so we don't have to take care of that inside. Um, I, I'm very honest with my schedule too when people ask. I, I never want to overpromise and uh, and not be able to perform something like that. Um, one of my big philosophies is instant estimate. So when they're here, I want to fill it all out. I want to hand it to them. I want to walk them through it and then answer any questions they have. Uh, I know a lot of contractors do electronic forms. They email. They do this and that. I find that when there's a lag like that, when you send something email, when you send a text. Chances are they've got some other estimates, and when that happens, when I have to send somebody something uh, up in the cities or they ask for it by email, a lot of the times they'll forget which painter you were and you have to remind them. So it, already that, that's kind of a no-go for me. So when I can hand it to them with all my marketing materials, 
in their house and explain it, that's, that's the best case scenario for me. And also I give free color consultations with every one of my jobs. So that's one of my sort of non-negotiables as well. So, okay, well, let's, uh, I'll give uh, my apprentice here, we'll, uh, we'll take this and he will start filming and we'll do the color consultation. So you guys called about a couple things. I think there was some interior painting and then yeah. there, was, there was something else as well. Um, yeah, just kind of the cabinets. Cabinets, gym, okay. Kind of just, you can see we have kind of the old oak look going on, just a lot of oak. So kind okay. of about what we might be able to do to kind of. Wonderful. Let's take a step inside yeah, and take a look around. Was it? And then if there's time to maybe the deck. Oh, deck as well. Sure. Um, were you kind of thinking, you know, main level here, you know, front room? Pretty much. Main level. Kind of, kind of the main, the main area that you spend most of the time in. Yeah. You know, it's pretty okay. open, but I don't know what. Like right now, it's just kind of all the same. So, do you have any tips or suggestions as to what we might be able to do just to kind of, yeah, okay. change it up just a little bit? Okay. And you know, you guys actually have a fairly modern color scheme already, so um, you, you must just want a little something extra. We did, that. yeah. So we had it, you know, we moved in in what, 2009? Right. And it was kind of all the browns. And oh, yeah. It was like yep. brown, and then about two years ago, we switched it to kind of just <coughs> gray. And we really like it. It's, okay. just, it's just kind of a lot. All Time to same. change. So Time to change. change. Yeah. Okay. Cool color. Yeah. A couple ways you can do that. Um, the low hanging fruit is sort of. Keep your color that you have now, if you like it, and then maybe add some accent colors. So, okay. you know, I, I have a couple of uh, uh, three criteria I usually okay. use for accent walls. Number one, a uh, good accent wall is a natural focal point, something that draws your eye, you know, fireplace, TV, something like that. Um, two inside corners. So when you have, when you have two inside corners like that and, and start and stop a color there, it seems to complete it. And, and it looks a little more sophisticated than than stopping it, you know, on an outside corner here. Okay. And also if there's symmetry. So those are sort of the three things. So, you know, when you look around this area here, I, the easiest one to probably do is the piece above the fireplace. Okay. Uh, the only reason why it may not be a good candidate is because it's kind of small, you may not get a lot of bang for your buck. So right. at that point, you know, maybe sprinkle it in. And another one of my favorite places to do is actually those three-sided pantries. So, oh, okay. you know, you can actually get a little bit of color here, a little bit of color here, okay. you know, kind ties the area together. Yeah. yeah, and, and yeah. you always want to respect the ratio of color too, you okay. know. If it's just that little bit, that's about 5% of the wall there. I like to keep it 15 to 25% of an accent. So okay. if we can tie those two areas in, I think that'd be a good okay. start, depending on the color too, you know. Okay. So, so then like the little front room area, mm -hmm. would you suggest kind of keeping that the same for the flow or would that be a spot? Flow is important. Uh, right now, it all it all is just wonderful. It, okay. it flows room to room. It's very good. Uh, your gray here is is in, it's, it's an interesting gray, okay. but it is just a backdrop for your other stuff. So, okay. um, by adding a color there, it'd be good. You can either choose to add an accent okay. while in here. You know, if you want to keep a little more of that ratio there. You know, this room in uh, in here too. This would be a good <laughs> example of you know you have two inside corners. Okay. You have symmetry and the light just naturally drags your eye out there. Okay. So that would be another good candidate. Okay. Not to say you couldn't do this room completely okay. in a different color. So it might tie it kind of like the whole idea. space in. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. And a lot of that is color dependent. If you choose burgundy. Well, I was going to say that too. <laughs> like, so what, I don't know, like what would be, I don't know, any suggest, we're kind of, we always seem to make the wrong decision. So where you, <laughs> you take any, <laughs> any tips. Where you place the color has a lot to do with what the color is. Okay. If you pick a very bright color, if you pick a very, very bright, rusty, reddish orange yeah. or a burgundy, you may want to use it in less places. But okay. if you pick a similar shade here and just go two, just like two notches darker, you can spread it around a little more because it's a little more okay. subdued and it's easier on the eye. Okay. So, yeah, you know, again, if, if you wanted burgundy, maybe this whole room isn't a good idea. Yeah. Maybe just a wall or okay. some, you know. Okay. And again, I've done this in a few other houses too, and these open floor plans, you know, you 
you guys are blessed with a little bit of those walls with three criteria, the okay. symmetry and all that. Uh, there's a lot of houses that don't have that where we don't have a, a clear accent wall. So a lot of the times what we'll do is actually uh, do an accent color on a ceiling or even a decorative finish. You know, I, I've done you know antique metals, coppers, you know, things like that. And okay. that's sort of, if you want that, you want it. Yeah. If not, you know, it's a good place because you're still keeping the floor of your room, but you have one really interesting yeah. sort of accent yeah. piece too. So. Huh. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I like to not forget about those rooms. Yeah, so. yeah, okay. I'll just take a, take a quick note here. Yeah. But no, otherwise, uh, you know, my, my edict is usually <coughs> never get something if you don't have to, especially okay. in, in the case to save money. And, and you guys have kids, so obviously it's going to get messed up. Yeah. It's not going to have <laughs> the longevity yeah. of, of a couple of elderly people. So okay. um, I would, you know, obviously you're, you're going to have to repaint most of this in the next 10 years anyway, probably for wear and tear reasons. So take it as long as you can. Okay. So if you can live with this color, we, we can add some accents. Okay. Uh, if not, certainly, you know, I can, okay. I can repaint the whole thing yeah. for you. But. No, that's smart. Because then the other thing was just, you know, we kind of got this house and built this house when it was still kind of that golden oak sort of trend. And yeah. like it, it's just a lot. And so, you know, without like doing a whole new wood floor or, oh, yeah. you know, all the tour or whatever, like maybe just thinking about the cabinets might be... Yeah, a lot of people ask, you know, if if we des if we decide to paint the cabinets, you know, do we have to do all the rest of the trim? Absolutely not. Okay. And almost every new house that I finish nowadays is that mix mm -hmm. of you know dark woodwork, light woodwork, and there's always painted versus stained and varnish. <coughs> so it's perfectly fine. Um, and the first hurdle you have to jump over with with painting the cabinets is, do you like the configuration? Okay. There are all the doors and the drawers are everything where you need them because if if you hate the layout. I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. we're not going to be changing the kitchen. Yeah. If you, I mean, if you do not like where certain drawers are and it's not functional, don't waste the okay. time painting it. It's okay. not going <laughs> to, it's not going to help it out. Yeah, no, but it's a pretty good flow. I mean, it works for us. Right and now. these look like they're really well built, uh, solid construction, things like yeah. that. They're a good candidate yeah. for painting. Um, it's it's about a uh, five day process for me, five working days. So we come in. We completely turn this into a surgical suite back here. Mm -hmm. No dust, no no air movement, no nothing. I take all the doors and drawers off, disassemble them, hardware off, hinges off. I take all that back to my shop and I finish that oh, there. So you don't do it here? No, okay. I, I, obviously I have to do the boxes here, but yeah. I want to keep it to a minimum. Sure. And in my shop, I can lay everything flat. We can get a good, you know, uh, okay. I, I bake them in my shop. I have all my professional spray equipment. So it's, it's a controlled environment there. Okay. But in here, uh, I will, I will do the same, like I said, surgical suite it. The only bad part is, is you're out of the kitchen for about five working days. So from, <laughs> from, from the time that I start, five working days later, it will look exactly like this, functional, but okay. everything painted, cleaned up, ready to go. So uh, we, we completely encase everything in plastic and okay. uh, glossy <coughs> paper, things like that. Floors, walls, uh, countertops, tile, everything. Okay. Uh, all the cabinets will be cleaned down. Uh, chemically treated to to help with the adhesion. Uh, I oil prime everything. I'm still a believer in oil primer. So that's it's that's why my process takes five days. If you okay. were to use a lacquer or, or something else like that, they can speed it up. They can do two, three coats in a day. I still do oil okay. uh, and I can do an oil top coat or I can do a hybrid, which is a water oil mix. Okay. It's, they're, they're about the same. It still takes the same time. Uh, and for picking that out, I actually brought yeah, samples yeah, for you guys yeah. here. So, okay. um, so one quick question. Like the yes, sir. Refrigerator and stuff like that. Would you have to take that stuff out, or is that something you guys would do? Or? I move the fridge. Okay. Um, I move the stove. Uh, the I, the I, I take it down. Take yep. Okay. Yep. Those are easy enough to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and certainly, if you guys want to disconnect everything and have it moved out, I can encase that stuff. But okay. normally, I can okay. work around it. It's okay. not a big Great. deal. So, okay. Well, I basically brought. Uh, samples here for you guys. These are sort of my yeah. uh, all-star finishes here. Okay. These are what most of the people end up liking to look at first or okay. end up choosing and they kind of go from there. Okay. So yeah. uh, here is here's sort of the starting point. Okay. Um, this one, this is just for color and looks. I did, a pure, ah, okay. I did a pure white okay. and then I did the darkest off-white that I yeah, consider like that. Awesome. still an off-white. To me, in my opinion, yeah. uh, if you go deeper than this, it's a color. It's yeah. a tan, it's, sure. it's a something else. So okay. this is about as deep as I go. And on here, I did the cream with uh, three different kinds of uh, okay. effects you can do to it, like a, a golden it. type of glaze, a distressing, and then like a chocolate brown, okay. Van Dyke brown sort of glaze. Okay. Now, 
if this one, I, and I, I bring the white one along just to show you how cream yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. some of the samples yeah. are. And then here is, okay. here is full scale cream. This is done in my shop, sprayed, and I laid out all the coats wow. for you okay. guys to see. So. so that was like this before? That's exactly, wow. yep, this yeah. is exactly the same okay. thing. Actually, it's the same cabinet profile okay. and everything that you guys okay. have. So yeah, so that this is, this is the exact finish you guys would get. Hmm. Uh, and then some people, you know, nowadays with islands and other stuff too, they want colors. Uh, this is pure black oil. Okay. Uh, so this kind of shows you with the oak, when you go, yeah. this one is a maple cabinet, you don't see any grain. This one with the oak, you still see the Got grain. It. Yeah. And it's a very common thing saying, will this get rid of the grain? You will never get rid of the grain. Yeah, so <laughs> kind of like this. Exactly, right. that'll be exactly that. So, and, and all the other colors, if you want fire engine red or lime green, it will end up being similar look okay. to that. So, yeah. And also, you know, if it's one of those things where you just don't want to bite the bullet and paint yet, I did glaze on this one too, a Van Dyke brown. So you can see if you just want it to look a little Maybe different. Down a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So those are the options there. And what I normally do is I there's a three quarter inch lip right here. <laughs> Why don't you have the plate yeah. covered? <laughs> Much better. Three quarter inch lip right here. Everything gets masked off in here, and I paint this inner lip here. So again, okay. it looks complete. You never, never finish paint on an outside corner. Always right. on the inside like that. So if you guys want to clean that stuff out, that's fine. Otherwise, I can usually mask right over. Okay. I can move stuff if I need to. So. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically, I will, I will take a note here. What is kind of the, because that's. I mean, this is obviously like the big question: is white or dark? Yeah. Like, what? What's kind of What's the criteria? Criteria? Yeah, like what was, I mean, you know, because we've kind of tried now over the last few years to bring in like some darker accent oh, yeah. stuff just with the table and furniture to break up the oak a little bit. Yep. So would it be smart to stick with like a dark to kind of the flow, or do you think like adding that more cream would be? Ninety percent of the color advice that I give is based okay. on who I work for, okay. what they like, what they didn't like, what I see in all my home magazines. That last ten percent is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. and. It, we sort of cross over that line a little bit okay. when we get to there. So personally, I like to see some type of off-white. Okay. Very few times do yeah. I actually yeah. do pure white. Yeah. And it's not hypocritical, but I actually use that in my own home, mm -hmm. only because I have pure white appliances. So sure. I, I have another pure white there. But on my second floor of my house, I have an off-white, okay. you know, more akin to this, because mm -hmm. I like to look at that better. Yeah. Um, it's not bad with pure white appliances to do an off-white cabinets, but some people just like the flow, you know, mm -hmm. if everybody talks about flow. So right. um, this off-white and this here, when you get rid of everything else, this looks white. It, sure. It's much lighter yeah. than you Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that shade. That's yeah, right. and it's a little more forgiving. It's softer, okay. and it's, you know, it's it, people seem to want some, and, and like I said, this is about the deepest off-white I normally go. There's a million off-whites in there, okay. and some of them just have one drop of color. Some approach that. But they're, most people pick some sort of off white. So that's, okay. if you go pure white, especially with the, yeah, the black granite, yeah. it gets very clinical. Yeah, yeah. Well. No, so. I don't think that would be, but maybe more the off white versus. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or, yep. Yeah. And yeah, and this one's a good example of, you know, there's, there's yeah. about 6,000 yeah, like <laughs> in between sense. there. Yeah. People are always surprised how light that ends up turning sure. out. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I think maybe if we keep this gray and just kind of go more of the accent. How about like under this, under the countertop, like right yeah. here? Would you stick with the gray or would that be another accent kind of? That would be a definite candidate for an accent okay. wall too. Okay. You know, depending on how, you know, if you do black cabinets here, maybe not so much with yeah. the accent wall, okay. but if, it, if it's white cabinets, this would be another one. Yep. Okay. The only downside is you're not going to see a lot of it. You don't see it much. Yeah. And it's going to get wear and tear. But if okay. it's a very bright color, you will get that effect. Okay. If it's just a darker gray, sometimes it gets lost. Okay. You know? Okay, one more kind of interesting question. Absolutely. Yes. How about like these guys? Would that be considered cabinet or would that be considered trim? Would you Absolutely leave that or would you? Cabinets. Okay. Yep. Okay. I've never yep. really noticed those yeah. before yep. until you start thinking about what. what Absolutely. We and I, I always okay. uh, clean off the uh, tops yeah. and then clean off the bottoms as okay. well. So okay. those will be everything you see, you know, minus the shelves inside will be that. So. Okay, right. yeah. Um, any other questions about the interior or the cabin stuff before we go and take a look at the deck? Oh, yes. no. no, I think that was really helpful. Okay, yeah, yeah no helpful. problem. All right. All right, so tell me.
me the, tell this me This is more his, his domain. <laughs> so pardon the toys. Yeah, so we built this a couple years back and just kind of, I wanted to keep the natural finish in the wood, so I kind of went with a, a lighter finish and didn't really keep up on it and now we're starting to peel and so oh, sure, sure. really just kind of want to kind of strip it down and, and start fresh to bring out those natural, that natural wood yeah. grain that, that once was the deck. 90% <laughs> of the people who want me to do their deck built a brand new deck and wanted to stay new cedar forever. They said, whatever it looks like now, do that in perpetuity. And it's possible, but every time you add a, a quality oil to it, it's going to add exactly like you did here. And from the looks of it, this looks like the exact same product that I use on my deck. It's probably what, maybe a Cabot oil? Okay, perfect, yeah. And I use like a natural finish on mine. This looks very close to that. Um, the only downside with those finishes, it, you pay for it, especially in Minnesota. Today, the heat index is mm -hmm. over 100, <laughs> and then we go negative 40 in the winter. Yeah. So we pay for it here in the Midwest. And the manufacturer recommends once a year you gotta wash, sand, and recoat it. So there's a lot of maintenance with this. If you go with something with more pigment, you might be able to stretch it out. They usually recommend one to three years for a semi-solid and like maybe three to five for a solid, but every time you do that then you, you either um, uh, make the grain more opaque or uh, you're just adding finish to it. So this this is the most durable finish if you maintain it. So this is this is much better than most of the decks I get. I will tell you that. Like I, I don't, yeah. I don't get the benefit. Well, it looks of like we meant to get around to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can see we're like, we, like we're trying different things out, and then. Oh yeah. yeah. No, no problem. This is this okay. is an easy fix, and this is sort of a standard. This is this is easier than most deck refinishes. Okay. Uh, basically, I chemically treat it uh, with an acid product uh, to brighten the wood again. Uh, I then pressure wash it and scrub it to get rid of the dirt and the and the dead wood grain in there. Uh, give it a couple days to dry and then we come back sand it all down nice and smooth and then another coat of the oil And all you got to do is there's gonna be minimal maintenance if you guys keep up with it every year okay. So if you get out here uh, My deck I built up enough of a finish on it where you basically take a scrub brush and soap and you don't need to pressure wash you Don't need to sand you're basically just cleaning the finish like a hardwood floor. So okay. um, That's the benefit. You just got to keep up on it. You know in, in all honesty the tops of the handrails and the floor if you hit those every year, you're way ahead of the game. Okay. You can usually let, you know, you can see the posts and the spindles. Yeah, yeah. Those look great. You can sometimes go two to three years there. In the, in the next year or two, if you're going to do it, definitely get some coats on those. And then you can maybe slack off and let it go every two to three years. So. Just, would you just do one coat then? One coat of oil. They only recommend one coat. Uh, it's like oil changes in cars. Minimal maintenance every so often is much better than... I'm going to put 13 coats of varnish on this thing. Okay. It'll look really good for a short period of time, then it'll all fall okay. off. Yep, gotcha. it's, it's a finish that's made to be like sunscreen, okay. basically just stop the UV. So okay. it's, it's made to wear away. Okay. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Should we go back inside? Yeah, let's go back inside. I'll take you guys through the estimate here. Questions, guys, before I kind of walk you through my process here and okay, with the interior <laughs> cleaning, uh, I kind of walked you through the process here. It's a little bit, you know, I can still make your kitchen usable. Okay. So at the end of every day, we can de-plastic the stove, the microwave if you need to feed the kids or whatever. Okay. Um, otherwise, you know, we, we sort of take it up for five days. Okay. Uh, most of my jobs, I have to work around something sure. that people do. Not a big deal. Yeah. The interior painting is much easier. Um, you guys can be here. You cannot be here. It matters not to us. Um, if you want me to do it, we'll set up a time, I'll come back, and okay. we'll, I'll bring my fan decks in, and then we'll, we'll pick colors. Okay. Uh, if there's any ambiguity about uh, what colors to pick, I'll give you guys a list of colors that we discussed about. You can go grab sample cords okay. and try them out on the wall. Yeah. That's, I like the idea of just maybe a darker, yeah. like the same kind of family, but a darker. You've got, I mean, this is, <laughs> yeah. this is a very up-to-date, okay. Yeah. stylized house it's not a big deal i understand wanting to take yeah. it a little a little yeah. more and that it's going to be yeah. easy here Between you guys that are, and then a cabinet, I think that'll you guys yeah. are working with a pretty easy yeah. easy thing okay. here so okay. this won't be bad uh but otherwise the interior painting is easy um uh if you want me to do it we'll get on the schedule when i see something coming up you know for the for the remaining part of summer i do jobs like this on rain days so it's sort of it's it's not a very satisfying thing to hear it's a variable sure. schedule okay. but yeah. you know if you guys want we can we can do that yeah. uh when i see a rain day coming up uh, I will come back, we'll go over colors, like I said, and I will give you a time and a date, and okay. we will be here. And okay. 
if you guys are both out of here, we will we will take care of everything. Okay. Don't don't feel like you need to move anything. If you if you wanted to move something, maybe picture frames, maybe a lamp. Sure. Just let us do the furniture. Okay. It's it's much easier. So okay. we'll come in. We'll make a drop cloth path from the floor all the way till here. We'll get uh, everything off to the middle. Everything will be canvas, plastic. You know, no dust, no no paint on anything. Uh, any of the art or, or hangings that you guys want down and deleted, we can patch all the holes. Oh. Otherwise, we can preserve okay. them. Got it. So, uh, and, and my system is usually nail in the wall, I leave it, hole in the wall, I patch it. Okay. So the that night before, good. two days before, if you guys want to walk around, if you don't want this picture here, just take the nail out, then I'll know it's a foolproof oh, system. Got it. Okay. If, if something is embedded in a stud and you can't get it out, just circle it with pencil and write my name by it and I'll, I'll okay. extract it. So, no pen, pencil. So, okay. uh, but other than that, yeah, we move everything in, switch plates off, everything taped, everything canvassed, patch all the walls, everything that's two coats, very high quality eggshell paint, stand okay. up to the kids. Okay. And uh, yeah, in, in the colors you want. Uh, the only time the estimate goes up is when we need three coats on something. Got it. One in a thousand need it. If you guys pick a color that's going to need three coats, I'll tell you beforehand that we have to lay down a primer coat and okay. then two. But paint is so good nowadays, yeah. you'd be hard pressed to find okay. colors that I can't cover in, in okay. two coats. So, yeah, but everything will have a nice eggshell sort of sort of sheen on it. And uh, before the end of the day, we, we get all our stuff out of here. Uh, we vacuum up behind all the furniture, okay. move the furniture back, vacuum up in the middle, get everything dusted, and right out the door. Okay. So, awesome. yeah. Good deal. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, any other questions, guys? Well, so. yeah. here's for you guys. Okay. And then kind of the deck, same thing. Same thing. It's uh, it'll be much easier to fit in. I mean, this summer is pretty busy, but uh, it's an easy project. So, uh, like I said, if you want to be on the schedule, I'll put you on. As soon as I see something, I'll let you know. I'm happy to move the furniture if, uh, at the end of the stain, you guys would mind moving it back. So how, how long will we have to stay off then? 24 hours. 24 hours. Yeah, it'll be dry. Or it'll be dry before that, but manufacturer says 24. Sure. Yeah, no. More and being north side, you're going to have a little shade, too, okay. so it, it may take a while. Yeah. Okay. All right. Other than that, that should be good, guys. Uh, do you have, uh, and, and like it states in the bottom there, uh, materials and labor are all included in that. So um, any other questions from you guys? No, I think that was, yeah, that was helpful. Wonderful. Thank you. Card magnet? Appreciate your, we, we try to pick paint colors and we <laughs> the wrong, I think to find this gray. I was gone and we came back and I walked in and I'm like, it's purple yeah. and try it again. No so problem. you know, yeah. and honestly it, it makes my life easier helping out with color. So okay. you know, it, it doesn't matter how good of a paint job you do, if the color's wrong, you know, try to do it. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Great. So, wonderful. Awesome. Hey, great to Thank meet you guys. You. I look Thank forward you. to it. Yeah. Thank you. Any way I can help you guys out, you let me know. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. No problem. <laughs> Have a good day. Okay. So there we go. I hope, uh, I hope if nothing else that this starts a discussion about how we do estimates, why we do estimates, and how we gain the trust of homeowners because uh, it's not about selling, it's about gaining trust. If you, if you're, if you gain the trust of the homeowners, uh, you will sell <laughs> more than you could possibly fit in your schedule. So now if uh, Chris will kick me off here, uh, I'm sure when our time goes off, but uh, I want to have a little uh, discussion about free estimates. Uh, every time I get around other um, contractors, uh, the discussion of uh, getting free estimates comes up. Uh, I am a a uh, firm believer in always giving free estimates, at least in my neck of the woods, there's no contractors who charge for estimates. So number one, that's in my area, it's not possible. If there were people, if, if the norm was selling uh, estimates or charging for estimates, I would still do them for free and I would still do free color consultations. Uh, think of it as marketing. Uh, you could either have a lot of money and stuff spent on Google AdWords or you can do face-to-face -face in the house. And what do you think the completion ratio of me in somebody's house talking to them is gonna be versus you know Google AdWords where people may just be looking looing through your website and price shopping. So um, a lot of people differ on this. I understand that, uh, especially from my last couple years in the PDCA, but um, that's just my philosophy on it. And uh, I will scroll through some uh, questions here. Uh, I'll start looking through if, if Chris if you got any very pertinent ones you can 
highlight them. I'm just gonna cut my apprentice loose here. Aaron, have a good day. <laughs> Don't disappoint. Okay. I'll go back to the top here, see what we got going. Uh, which whites? Uh, I get mine through uh, my pants, Sherwin Williams or Hirschfields. Hirschfields is a is a, uh, a local Midwest brand here, but I believe they're all Carhartts or Dickies. Uh, Natalie, what percentage of customers in your market are switching to white off-white cabinets rather than keeping some type of original wood? Uh, almost everyone. Uh, white woodwork in my neck of the woods or off-white woodwork is all the rage. Uh, the last five new houses that I've completed, they, they've all been gray walls, off-white woodwork with a mix of, in the Midwest, we have alder or aspen woodwork and it's stained almost black, almost pure black. So it's it's that gray, black and white or off-white scheme like that. And and that's that's a very popular thing. We have a thing called Parade of Homes up here where all the local builders uh, put forth a new home. Uh, they, they list it for people to, to tour for free and, and people go around and parade through them. And almost every one of those uh, gray, white and black schemes. see what else we got here oh through the PDCA do you email a quote or how do you present the numbers uh, as you guys saw in that I actually write it out on a carbon uh, duplicate form there and I hand it to the homeowner and I want to make sure I walk them through every bit of it so there's no questions uh, this is simple work for people like us because we do it every day I probably do 200 of these a year so for me it's it's cut and paste it's easy uh, I, I've gone through this you know 200 times a year for the last 10 years but for the homeowner this may be the first time they're going through it so uh, you really want to make sure that you walk them through and and make sure they understand and and like I did in there two or three times just make sure any questions and there still be questions and I'm sure they'll call you later normally if somebody wants uh, to get put on my list uh, they will have a few follow-up questions just to make sure you know and, and that's completely understandable even if you write things down uh, on the estimate. Uh, one, one of the biggest things is uh, people people always ask, you know, right before they ask to be put on the schedule, does that include paint and labor? And even though I clearly write it out on the bottom of my estimate and I actually circle it for them, they still ask. So then you know they just, they're just they just making sure because they probably got a, a couple other bids and, and maybe they included it, maybe they didn't. So, you know, I, I completely understand that. Did you give them an actual quote before leaving? Yes, I did. Yep, that was an actual, that was an actual quote. And I and, and I should tell you that this isn't the first time I met these people. I did prearrange this. I did ask if it was okay to actually live stream nationwide through their house. So I did walk them through a few of the things. Uh, but yeah, most of the information there was was brand new to them. So, oh, Danny Aries question. I'll go back up here and see if I can get that. Nick, what resources do you use uh, to become better at color consulting? Here's where I consider myself to have an unfair advantage. Um, this is my life. I, I dedicate every waking hour to this and to playing with my kids at night. Uh, I subscribe to about 17 or, or 18 home magazines, uh, home builder magazines, handyman, remodelers, uh, painting magazines, all that stuff and I devour that stuff. This is my hobby. Uh, I love old homes, I love new homes, I love the process of building, I love all that stuff. So for me it's not tough. I just take in any information I can. And especially nowadays when you have, you know, even magazines like this old house, they will actually list the paint colors in there. So when you see something you like, I always take note, like, oh, I've used that Benjamin Moore Sherwin Williams color before. So when a customer wants that, again, I can just suggest them say, hey, you know what, in my in my archive of magazines and literature, I actually have an example of that to show you. And uh, I actually have a couple bookshelves uh, of historic resources. And uh, every time I see an interesting article in a magazine, cut it out put it in um, a cellophane sort of uh, plastic thing and put it in a binder and then I reference that for my homeowners. So uh, I consider it a little bit of an unfair advantage because this is nothing thrills me more than working with houses and decorating houses. So uh, you just got to take in a whole bunch of information. Uh... I will tell you one of the resources uh, to Danny is uh, Nowadays, with the proliferation of the internet, uh, I basically tell my people, uh, I carry around uh, Sherwin-Williams and Benjamin Moore fan decks 
And a lot of times what I found myself gravitating towards are the Benjamin Moore fan decks. It seems that, at least in my neck of the woods, home builders, remodelers, designers, all the designers I work for, the realtors I work for that suggest me to, to people, they all suggest Benjamin Moore colors. Uh, and a lot of the home magazines I found too have quite a bit of Benjamin Moore colors listed in them. Uh, and when you, I, I always tell my homeowners, if you're looking for even the outside of a house, uh, if you're looking for a particular color in Benjamin Moore, shaker beige, uh, you can just type in shaker beige kitchen and there's probably going to be 10,000 images of shaker beige kitchens. So, excuse me. So it's one of those things where you can actually see on the internet examples of that color. You can see it in, in high light, low light, uh, daylight, nighttime, incandescent, whatever. Uh, and the internet is a great resource. So uh, usually when I tell my people if they have no, no place to start with color, go to... Uh, go to the internet, Google image search, Benjamin Moore, the color, and then kitchen, bedroom, exterior, whatever. Uh, that's a great place to start. Let's see what else. <laughs> How long do you wait before following up with the homeowner? I don't follow up. Uh, in the winter, uh, you know, it, my, my year is basically divided into two six-month chunks. In Minnesota here, I'm lucky to get six months outside, and I definitely get six months inside every year. So the summer always fills up way ahead in advance, not a big deal. Uh, winter, uh, because of the size of the job, sometimes I do one bedroom or one bathroom for grandma. Uh, you have to go through many more of those jobs to keep you know all five of us busy. So usually what I find myself doing is uh, I found that the biggest lull at least in in my business is usually that first couple weeks after January 1st and people have been partying they've done the holiday stuff they spent a lot of money and if you haven't scheduled something before that big holiday break uh, you're probably going to be without work for a little bit so what I actually do is before the holidays in the first two weeks of December I start going through the people on my list on my to-do list and I start pre-scheduling them out all the way into January and sometimes into February just to make sure they have something on the books they're much I, I've never had somebody back out uh, when I've scheduled them right after the New Year's uh, in the years uh, in the first couple years of business I would say you know what I need a little time off. I'll just wait till the first of the year. I'll call somebody. They're on my list. They want me to do it, and I'll be happy to do it. And and the common response was, you know, it was just the holidays. Can we just push it off? Can we go February? Can we go March? And you feel like you're pushing. And I never want to directly sell, and I never want to push. So I will follow up with the people on my list. Uh, if it's a very large uh, commercial customer of mine who I've done work for or an industrial client who I've done work for or uh, – I think the, I think maybe one of the only times I've ever followed up is a couple of church restorations because those are sort of passion projects of mine. Uh, once in a while, when you involve a congregation or a city government or when there's many people making decisions, sometimes I will follow up if it's a project I would really like to have pictures of on my website, just to make sure that the decision making didn't get lost. But otherwise, for my for you know 99% of all my residential and commercial clients. <coughs> excuse me I'll just I'll just let it be and if they if they want me to paint you know they'll they'll make sure that you know they, they let me know that so yeah okay <laughs> we love your World War two haircut uh, I hate to correct you it's it's a more more like World War one but uh, you know, I've already corrected somebody on that once. I don't want to have to do that again. So, okay. Um, if there's, if there's, I'll, I'll wait a second here, see if there's another question that pops through. Otherwise, uh, thank you guys so much for, for watching this. Uh, this is a big honor for me, and, and I love the opportunity to share this stuff. Uh, I've, I grew up in the painting business, uh, but I grew up on an island. I had no interactions with other painters, with other contractors, and uh, this group has really been uh, a great bunch of people to bounce ideas off, especially Chris Shank, kind of my, he's the, uh, he's the sort of uh, stopper in the pipe that either lets me through or not, and uh, it's been really interesting to, uh, to get to know him and then uh, the rest of the people here. And uh, all these videos will be archived on uh, Contractor College. 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of other good content on there. So again, if you want to be a better human, if you want to be a better painter, go on there and check it out. Um, weekly, I host a live segment uh, for homeowners mainly, but also I've had some contractors uh, chime in here or there called Ask a Painter Live. Uh, that's on Facebook as well. I usually do those Friday mornings. Uh, lately, I've been doing them from my job site. Uh, and all of those, I think I have eight or nine of them now, uh, they are all archived on my YouTube page. Just search for my name, Nick Slavic. Uh, you can get a hold of me anytime, uh, www.nickslavic.com. Connect with me through Facebook. And uh, once again, uh, Chris, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, it's been great uh, to get to know all the people associated with the PDCA. And uh, if there's no other questions here, I think, uh, I think I will sign off. So again, thank you guys very much. Uh, happy Friday. Have a good weekend and send any of your questions uh, after the feed as well. I will follow up with this this next week and take care of any questions that are lingering. So you guys have a good weekend and uh, take care.